Since its launch in 1977, NASA's Voyager 1 has been traveling through the cosmos, but researchers were completely unprepared for what happened next. This decades-old spacecraft, positioned 14 billion miles away from our planet, accomplished something that defied all expectations. It autonomously modified its trajectory. Even more unsettling, just before this directional shift occurred, the probe began transmitting peculiar signals containing patterns that have left scientists desperately searching for explanations. While NASA maintains official silence, internal sources report widespread concern among team members. Could Voyager be attempting to communicate something crucial? Has it discovered something in the cosmic void that fundamentally alters our comprehension of space? The unexpected signal. During the early morning hours of a Tuesday in 2023, Dr. Margaret Chen suddenly became alert at her workstation. This 73-year-old engineer had initially joined NASA's Voyager program in 1972 as an enthusiastic graduate student fresh from university. Now approaching five decades later, she gazed at her computer screen with complete astonishment. Voyager 1, humanity's most distant artificial creation, was transmitting signals that had never been part of its original programming. This elderly spacecraft, positioned more than 14.5 billion miles from our home planet, had spent countless years relaying predictable information about the interstellar environment. This particular evening presented something entirely different. Hidden within the standard telemetry data was a subtle rhythmic sequence, a low-frequency resonance displaying mathematical precision. This signal maintained its presence across numerous transmissions, eliminating the possibility of random interference. Even more concerning, was the fact that this enigmatic resonance had emerged just days prior to Voyager's unexpected trajectory modification, a maneuver that no personnel at NASA had authorized. The overhead fluorescent lighting buzzed as Chen's colleagues assembled around her computer terminal. The workspace carried the familiar aroma of coffee and electronic equipment, the identical scent that had filled mission control since the 1970s. Although the computing equipment had evolved from massive room-sized machines to sleek modern displays, Displayed on the screen, the unusual signal pattern pulsed with disturbing consistency. When Voyager 1 departed Earth, Jimmy Carter occupied the presidency. The original Star Wars film had recently premiered in cinemas, and the Apple II computer had just entered the market. Currently, those signals traveling at the speed of light required more than 21 hours to reach our planet, sufficient time for someone to complete half a journey around Earth. What phenomenon had Voyager discovered in the emptiness of space? What force could prompt a spacecraft engineered to maintain its trajectory through the void between stellar bodies to modify its path? The mission that originated as an investigation of outer planets had transformed into something completely unanticipated, an enigma at the frontier of interstellar space that questioned our comprehension of the universe and potentially humanity's isolation within it. As sunrise approached over the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, experts from various fields assembled in a restricted conference facility. The questions permeating the atmosphere were substantial. Had Voyager 1 discovered something beyond human comprehension? Was this a technical malfunction in deteriorating systems, or the initial detection of something groundbreaking? The solution would revolutionize our perspective of interstellar space and possibly humanity's solitude in the cosmos. Origins of a Grand Journey Voyager's narrative commenced with an exceptional celestial arrangement. During the early 1970s, NASA astronomers discovered that Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune would soon position themselves in a formation that manifests only once every 176 years. This planetary configuration presented an extraordinary opportunity. A single spacecraft could visit all four outer planets during one mission, utilizing each planet's gravitational field as a slingshot mechanism to propel itself toward the subsequent destination. Gary Flandro, a young engineer at JPL, initially identified this possibility while calculating planetary positions using a circular slide rule. His discovery transformed what could have been multiple expensive separate missions into an elegant grand tour of the outer solar system. The Nixon administration originally canceled the ambitious grand tour due to budgetary constraints, but a reduced version emerged, the Voyager program, comprising two identical spacecraft assigned to explore Jupiter, Saturn, and potentially beyond. Each Voyager spacecraft resembled a large mechanical arthropod, measuring 13 foot in height, with a 12-foot dish antenna functioning as its primary feature. 
an extended magnetometer boom protruded like an insect's feeding apparatus, maintaining sensitive magnetic instruments at a distance from the spacecraft's electronic interference. The central body contained cameras, spectrometers, and computers, possessing less computational capability than contemporary digital timepieces. The complete assembly weighed 1,820 lel part, approximately equivalent to a compact automobile, and derived its power from three radioisotope thermoelectric generators that transformed heat from decaying plutonium into electrical energy. The mission's conception wasn't without opposition. Environmental advocates protested the launch of nuclear materials into space, while budget oversight groups questioned the cost of sending probes beyond the recognized boundary of our planetary system. Despite these concerns, on August 20, 1977, Voyager 2 launched from Cape Canaveral aboard a Titan 3E Centaur rocket. Voyager 1 followed on September 5, traveling on a more rapid trajectory that would enable it to reach Jupiter and Saturn ahead of its companion. Mission coordinators expected the exploration to continue for approximately five years. Instead, they established humanity's longest operating space mission and our initial genuine interstellar explorers. The engineering obstacles were enormous, creating systems capable of withstanding decades of cosmic radiation, temperatures approaching absolute zero, and the isolation of deep space. Most importantly, the spacecraft required operation with increasing independence as communication delays extended from minutes to hours. Before the Voyagers left Earth, Carl Sagan and a committee of scientists prepared a special cargo, the Golden Record, a gold-plated copper disc containing sounds, music, greetings in 55 languages, and 116 images from Earth. Attached to each spacecraft, these records served as a message to the cosmos, a time capsule of humanity designed for any intelligence that might eventually encounter these solitary travelers from our planet. Planetary Revelations Voyager 1 arrived at Jupiter in March 1979, initiating a period of discovery that transformed planetary science. As it approached the gas giant, excitement built at JPL. The spacecraft's cameras displayed Jupiter with unprecedented detail. A world of turbulent clouds and enormous storms, the Great Red Spot, observable from Earth for centuries, revealed itself as a complex weather system, large enough to contain three Earths. Scientists pressed forward in their seats as each new image constructed, line by line on their monitors, expressing amazement at details, never before witnessed by human observation. The revelations followed in rapid succession. Voyager 1 demonstrated that Jupiter's moon Io, which astronomers had anticipated would be a lifeless crater-covered world similar to our moon, was actually vibrant with volcanic activity. Sulfurous plumes extended hundreds of kilometers above its surface, the first active volcanoes ever detected beyond Earth. This finding alone necessitated textbook revisions and expanded our understanding of geological processes in the solar system. Following Jupiter, Voyager 1 proceeded to Saturn, arriving in November 1980. At this location, the spacecraft's cameras and instruments revealed the genuine complexity of Saturn's rings, not simple bands as observed from Earth telescopes, but thousands of individual ringlets with elaborate structures. The images displayed mysterious spokes traveling through the rings and braided configurations that resisted straightforward explanation. Scientists described the experience of viewing these images as comparable to standing before a masterwork of art both scientifically captivating and aesthetically magnificent. Saturn's largest moon, Titan, proved especially fascinating. Voyager discovered it enveloped in a dense orange-colored atmosphere that concealed its surface from observation. Spectrometers identified complex organic molecules in this atmosphere, indicating Titan might harbor chemical processes similar to those that preceded life on Earth. Although Voyager couldn't penetrate the haze, it established the foundation for future missions like Cassini-Huygens, which would subsequently reveal Titan's methane lakes and rivers. The control room during these planetary encounters was a location of managed enthusiasm. Engineers and scientists concentrated over consoles, the steady clicking of keyboard inputs interrupting quiet conversations. When significant images arrived, applause erupted, followed by intense discussion over unexpected features the atmosphere felt charged with discovery. Outside the facility, international media assembled, and images from these distant worlds appeared on television screens and newspaper headlines globally. 
bringing the wonder of exploration into homes across Earth. After completing its primary mission at Saturn, Voyager 1's trajectory carried it northward out of the ecliptic plane, the flat region in which planets orbit the Sun. This path meant it would not encounter additional planets, while Voyager 2 continued toward Uranus and Neptune. For Voyager 1, the planetary exploration phase had concluded, but an even more remarkable journey was just commencing. The voyage into interstellar space, the pale blue dot and beyond. In February 1990, before Voyager 1's cameras were permanently deactivated to preserve power, mission scientist Carl Sagan persuaded NASA to rotate the spacecraft for one final photographic mission from 3.7 billion miles away. Voyager captured a series of images, looking back at the planets. In one of these frames appeared a pale blue dot, Earth suspended in a sunbeam, barely distinguishable among the vastness of space. The resulting photograph became one of the most profound images ever captured. Sagan later contemplated that this tiny pixel, our entire world, demonstrated our responsibility to treat one another more kindly and to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. A team from Chile and Germany, coordinated with research stations in Antarctica, using neutrino detectors buried deep beneath the ice. What they found defied logic a persistent neutrino stream pulsing upward from below the Earth's surface, perfectly synchronized with Voyager's most recent emissions. This should have been impossible. Neutrinos don't bounce, they don't reflect, and they certainly don't pulse in harmony with deep space signals. But when the pulse patterns were mapped, they revealed something even more chilling. A 3D coordinate grid, not in space, but pointing to an underground location beneath Wilkes Land, one of the least explored regions on Earth. A connection was forming, one that looped Voyager 2 in interstellar space, an artificial object in the Oort cloud, electromagnetic effects on human memory, and now something beneath our feet pulsing in rhythm with the stars, and the shape of the pattern matched the very same triple spiral that Voyager had sent weeks earlier. It wasn't a warning, it was a countdown. In early July 2025, Voyager 2 emitted a series of pulses that coincided exactly with several global network anomalies. But these weren't just data spikes or lag events. They were breaches. Three military-grade encryption systems, one American, one Israeli, and one private European aerospace protocol, suffered simultaneous failures. What linked them? All three had once used communication satellites that briefly relayed telemetry from Voyager during its final Earth-aligned window years ago. The systems had been disconnected from the probe for over a decade, yet now encrypted files stored offline were accessed, duplicated, and overwritten with fragments of the same spiral pattern code. It was clear now, Voyager's signal wasn't static, it was recursive, using old handshakes, archived protocols, and obsolete logic gates to reach back into systems long thought secure. But why overwrite old data unless it was planting something? The idea that Voyager's transmission was injecting a digital seed into our most secure systems quickly turned from speculation to accepted internal theory at multiple intelligence agencies. And the chilling part was this. No one could trace where the seed came from or what it was growing into. As Voyager's frequency continued modulating, teams at MIT and Tokyo University began experimenting with audio translations of the raw signal. What began as white noise eventually produced wave harmonics that displayed patterns eerily similar to biological neural rhythms, those seen in the firing of synapses. More strangely, the signal wasn't consistent. It adapted. When played into a closed-loop audio system, it began mimicking the frequency environment of the room, almost like it was listening, then repeating, then responding. A pattern was forming. Voyager's signal wasn't just data. It behaved more like an organism, a living algorithm able to shift, mimic, and integrate its environment to maintain structure. The final test was shocking. When introduced into a simulation of a neural net trained for pattern recognition, the signal didn't just trigger predictable responses. It rewrote the neural pathways, optimizing them beyond known AI benchmarks. In other words, Voyager had brought back something that thinks, remember Wilkes Land, the subterranean region in Antarctica emitting neutrino pulses? A joint expedition was finally approved. Using ground-penetrating radar, seismic imaging, and thermal sensors, researchers confirmed the unthinkable. 
a hollow structure at least 60 miles wide buried beneath the ice shelf with geometric boundaries too precise for any natural formation. The most disturbing detail, its outer edges pulsed with low-frequency EM fields, perfectly synchronized with the Voyager signal despite no cable, satellite, or line-of-sight connection. Inside the thermal cavity, sensors picked up heat signatures that defied explanation, symmetrical, stable, and radiating in Fibonacci intervals, just like the fractal image hidden in Voyager's earlier data burst. And then, deep beneath the ice, microphones captured resonance, a sound not dissimilar to whale song, but metallic, rhythmic, and artificially constrained to a fixed frequency band, the same band Voyager's signal had adopted just 72 hours earlier. Something was under Antarctica, something active, something tuned to Voyager 2. Finally, the most unsettling event occurred not in space, but in Chile. The ALMA ray, a collection of some of the world's most advanced radio telescopes, suddenly went dark for 38 seconds during a routine observation of the Voyager corridor. Not just offline, not just technical failure. It was as if the entire array ceased to exist from the network's point of view. When systems rebooted, logs had been wiped, data drives corrupted, but one piece remained, a fragment, barely 2.7 seconds long, of recorded audio from one of the dish microphones. The audio, when played back, was not cosmic radiation, not a spacecraft ping, but a voice, not speaking, but screaming. Dozens of layers, male, female, childlike, harmonic, screaming in unison, in perfect synchronization with Voyager's transmission. NASA classified the file, but insiders leaked a quote from one of the analysts who heard it. That wasn't a recording, that was a response. We knocked, and something knocked back. We sent Voyager 2 out into the void, as a messenger of peace, as a relic of human curiosity, a symbol of our hope that someone somewhere might find it, understand it, and know we once existed. But now, nearly 50 years later, it's not us reaching into the dark. It's the dark reaching back. The signal we're receiving isn't an echo. It's not a reflection. It's not even communication in the way we understand it. It's an infiltration of systems, of frequencies, of thought itself. It hijacks satellites, infects machines, rewrites algorithms, whispers in resonances buried under ice, pulses from stars that should remain still, and activates golden records that were never meant to power anything. But the truth is even more disturbing, because maybe Voyager didn't find something. Maybe it was always meant to deliver something, not from us, but to us. A message seated in the stars, waiting for us to be advanced enough to understand it, or arrogant enough to ignore the warning. And now that we've decoded the spirals, realigned the signals, and heard the scream from across the coldest voids, we have only one question left. Did we just receive a message from the future? Or did we activate something that was never supposed to wake up? Whatever the answer is, Voyager 2 just turned back, and what it brought with it is no longer out there. It's already here. Subscribe for more content like this.